Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here, recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee. And you know what? These walls are frames. They're not real walls. Like, you know, frames are also not real crimes. And they're also not real pictures. They're surrounding real crimes or real pictures. These walls are going to frame what we will yet construct with concrete powder. Now what I'm thinking is, since I, I was thinking I wanted to do something with interlocking pieces, and I'd considered doing a Tetris type pattern, but with Tetris, the weird thing there is that you really can't make an actual wall of Tetris blocks, because as the uh, British band Pig with a Face of a Boy pointed out uh, in their song, um, A Complete History of the Soviet Union Through the Eyes of a Soviet or through the eyes of a humble worker, arranged to the Tetris melody, they have a lyric that is uh, simply, What's the point of it all when you're building a wall and in front of your eyes it disappears? So, like, really, if I built a wall out of Tetris blocks, the wall would disappear. This is what it would look like. Here is an example of what the wall would look like if I actually built it entirely out of Tetris blocks. So... I was thinking, you know what? My daughter and I had a lot of fun playing Blockus this weekend. If I could get four different colors, which is still one more than the three I originally tried out over on that part right there, then maybe I could do something interesting with it. So, having thought about it, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the light gray concrete powder, the black concrete powder, white concrete powder, and gray concrete powder to make a pattern based on the game Blockus. And each um, kind of segment will look like blockus blocks. So, whoa, this one's actually five wide. So an example of a, a blockus block would be something like that. It's like a Tetris block, but with an extra block. But there's also blockus blocks that are only like one wide or one by one. But then there's also like four block. Um, dang it. I'm not used to this gravity thing. I know the point of this doing this with gravity blocks was supposed to be that I could uh, do things from higher up and then work down, which I still hope to do, but I did want to have kind of some fun with this as well. So, like, here you go. These are an example of a set of blockus blocks, and I feel like I can do an interesting pattern with this that will be geometric, non-repeating, because I'm not going to pre-plan it. I'm just going to kind of build it as I go. And hopefully that'll give me something interesting to look at and you something interesting to look at. Wow. I almost placed that torch and prevented myself from landing in the water. That was almost an unnecessary suicide. Wow. Um, that would have been terrible. Anyway, well, I better get back up there. Time skip. I've had a little bit of time to look at this, and I'm beginning to realize that I've made a huge mistake. I've overlooked that one of the rules of Blockus is that same color blocks have to diagonally touch corners with each other. So actually, like, all of these moves here are illegal. Like, this is no good because this white piece blocks both of these corners. I should have to have, like, a different color block coming out of this corner, different color block coming out of that corner, and out of that corner. Now, then all the blocks that, like, cross each other have to cross through diagonal corners. It'll make more sense when we look at it in the Jolo deck, but what I'm realizing is that the way I've done this with the slots at the top of here is actually completely worthless for this. Because I had originally imagined I would use these slots up here to place the gravity blocks. And it would look totally awesome and save me a ton of time. Like, right, if I just place blocks like right along here, boom, super simple. But because these need to build from the corners into the middle. So like you'd have one color building from this corner, one color building from that corner, one from that corner, one from that corner. I actually can't use gravity blocks for this without making it crazy more complicated than I already intended to. So here's what I'm thinking that I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to put some sort of gravity blocks as a back end for this. Now wait, if I just drop the gravity blocks here, that's going to end up blocking my doorway there. Which is not ideal, but the real wall, the real building doesn't actually have doorways like that. 
So, whoa, and that's how you almost die. Well, what I'm thinking is, whoa, that's how you almost get even closer to death. I'm one step closer to the edge, and I'm about to break. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get a, a, a wall of gravity blocks that's going to be relatively simple. Grays, blacks, no white gravity blocks. And we're going to run that along here. Then, we're going to get some sort of stone blocks that match, um, that we're going to have four different colors of stone blocks that will be a overlay in front of them. They will be non-gravity blocks because we absolutely need for them to be able to stay up on their own in order to actually build a proper blockus board. Now, let's run over to the YOLO deck and I'll show you a quick example of what I mean. Well, I've come up here to my JOLO deck in order to test out and refine my ideas for the blockus walls. And I noticed this down here, and I thought, like, what are those? Are those teeny tiny mouses or mice or mice on the floor? Turns out they're just the pigs down there in the bay, but the blue floor made them look like they were kind of small and on top of it, which really freaked me out earlier. But anyway, wasn't recording for that part, sorry. What we're going to try and do is figure out how this would all look. We'll have one corner up there. And we'll have one corner kind of right here. And we'll have another one. Let's see. So we've done cobble and smooth stone already. So we'll have the stone bricks come up this way. And our andesite will have go like this. We are missing one piece here. Boom. So we're going to have our different colors of dark blocks in there. We're going to have our foreground with the various states of wall chunks, which, while they might not blend together perfectly, they're not really supposed to. So we're going to have our, our double-layered wall here, and I think it should work rather well. I am a little bit worried about mobs just randomly spawning inside of these little nooks, but in the long term, they'll be on the outside of the castle, and I don't think it'll matter. In the short term, this is inside of our base, and we don't need baby zombies. So, yeah, we're going to do that. But I feel like this is a pretty fair way to go about this. And if I don't like the exact textures, I can come back and try it again later. But, okay, let's go ahead and get this going. If we just need to arbitrarily choose a part of the wall to wall off, the logical side to do is the one facing Mumbo's base, because we want Mumbo's base to look nice and doing that sooner rather than later makes us a good neighbor. However, if we are just trying to do a proof of concept that we don't know if it'll look nice or not, the logical place to do it is going to be facing our base because it's nearer the materials we will need to fix it if it looks terrible. So I'm kind of thinking the logical thing to do is this panel right here, although I'm realizing that that door might become inaccessible in the act of doing that. Yes, that door will become entirely inaccessible. Dang it. Well, let's just run up here real quick and figure this out. And this is going to be incredibly monotonous if I count it out the whole time. So we're just going to time skip. Those walls are already looking way better. And then when we add the additional layer in front of them, they'll only look further improved. So from the inside, too, that looks... Um, pretty good. I'm not going to necessarily adorn it on the same way on the inside. I'll just kind of leave it all messed up and terrible. Which I think is going to add to the sense of despair. It's important when you're building haunted houses to have a sense of despair. And if you're building a haunted castle, it's even more important. Okay, so up we go. That's too far. That's how we fall to our death. Now, a traditional block is opening. Might be something like this. And then might be followed up by something like this. And everybody wants to play toward the middle as much as they can while also preventing their opponents from getting too far into their own territory. So this is another classic third move. So We've got kind of three moves set up from this side, and we'll set up from that side later. So we'll have cobble coming from there. We'll have this piece coming from here. 
kind of a, a similar opening gambit. Well, I try not to do too much math or problem solving on camera if it's not going to be amusing. And let me tell you, there are 19 different blockus blocks in each color. And there are four colors. And it takes a lot to... Whoa. I'm also running out of food. Dang it. So in terms of problem solving, things I haven't solved are my hunger, where to put all of the blockus blocks. I think I've probably put like 12 of them down out of the 19 from each color. No, I'm going to die. This is going to be how I die. This is not a good way to die. Dang it. All I want to do is end my video here, but I need to wipe out this scaffolding so I can show you guys my progress because I'm slowly just getting too exhausted to continue. I'm going to make a dumb mistake like falling off the scaffold a single additional time and then losing all my hearts, which I need. Time Lords have like two, and I've got like ten, and yet somehow I am just not regenerating the way that they do. It's unfair, arguably. Like, extremely unfair. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and knock out this part of the scaffold. Oh, dang it. That didn't work the way I wanted it to. That's closer to the way I wanted it to. And then I was going to teleport over to here to show you how this ended up looking, but then I realized there's a spider there. I need these ladders back, though, but I have no health. Take it. Okay, here we go. Six arrows, one spider. Any other mobs? No? Good, you stay away. Okay. Two and a half hearts now. Things going about the way you'd expect them to be going. So we're just going to jump down here without dying or taking any additional fall damage. Then we are going to... Part of me wants to make a mad dash for the cows in the uh, mushroom biome and try to get some soup before we end the episode, but I think that that's, that's just my lack of sleep talking. What I need to do is just end the episode here. We've got the four colors kind of intervening, intermingling, fighting with each other in front of this. We're going to have a lot more pieces to fill in kind of these broad open areas too before we're actually done. I'm realizing I should go to the store and buy an actual blockus board because I've been trying to mentally play this game by myself on this giant wall on that scaffold I was on, and that is not a good thing for sane people to do. That is a a bad thing for sanity, for, for brain having. So anyway, I'm going to go to the store now and buy me an actual Blockus board. This is not a commercial for Blockus. I'm only buying it because I'm going insane trying to do this otherwise. If you are not embarking on a project like this where you have 16 such panels to lay out, you probably don't need one. But I find myself in the envi no, the unenviable position of needing one. And my daughter's been bugging me to get one ever since Play on Con anyway, which I couldn't justify because her birthday's not for like six months, but I could justify it as a YouTube expense. So, anyway, we have started this. I think that we're getting the idea across. It's going to look way better. Right now, it looks like there's, like, spindly legs and, like, a chicken disco dancing or something. I, it's not going to look like that at the end. But I'm just out of endurance. This has been about two hours of playing Blockus by myself. That's bad for brains. That is not a safe mental state. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get going. Anyway... Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring.